Ramadan 360 to you and who we have been graciously and generously supporting throughout the month. Alhamdulillah, of course, we have HHRD in the USA. We have uh, the uh, Islamic Relief Organization in Canada. And of course, we have Forgotten Women in the UK. We'll drop the links throughout the day in the chat. Please continue to support those who support those most in need in our ummah. And do your part to uh, be generous as you can, as you've been generous, alhamdulillah, throughout this beautiful month of Ramadan. And also, we want to make sure that everyone is aware that we do have our automated giving campaign for the last 10 nights. If this experience has been valuable, if it's been beneficial to you, I know many of you watch with your family. Uh, some people get catch the recordings. Whether it's this experience with Al-Maghrib or the countless other ways in which we bring authentic Islamic knowledge to you, whether it be through the on-site courses, the online courses, the virtual courses, the webinars, uh, whether it be through our Tarbiya program, our Murabbi program, whatever the modality, whatever the method in which you experience Al-Maghrib, we want to continue this journey. We want to continue the mission. As was mentioned in the webinar, despite the fact that we're over 20 years in, we believe this is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more potential, so much more, so much more that we want to do for the ummah in terms of spreading knowledge. And we want you all to be a part of that journey and a part of that story. So we do encourage you to join us at almagrib.org forward slash donate and help us with our campaign. Uh, there are one-time donation options. And you also have the ability to automate your donation throughout the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And we have it set up through our IT team. So it'll actually take the donation at night in your local time. MashaAllah. So that way you will be guaranteed that every night of those last 10 nights, which one of those nights is Laylatul Qadr, that you will have donated and supported Al-Maghrib and its mission and invested in many students, many families such as your own who have benefited from this knowledge and who have taken it on into other facets and aspects of their life. And you can also bring to life the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Uh, that is recorded in, reported in Bukhari and Muslim, in which we learn that there are two angels, Malakan, Yanzilani, they come down every day, every day that a servant of Allah wakes up, there are two angels making dua, one of those angels makes dua, uh, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa, O oh Allah, anyone who is spending, anyone who is giving, anyone who is charitable and generous, whoever is spending, then give them more, replace for them, Give them in the scholars they mentioned this could be in this dunya, they replace it, you they he replaces it for you now, it could be in the hereafter as well. Uh, and then, of course, the other angel makes the dua, Allahumma a'ati mumsikan talafa, may Allah protect us. Oh Allah, the one who is stingy, the one who's holding back, who's not donating, may, uh, may Allah bring destruction. Uh, to their wealth, to their wealth. And the scholars, they mentioned this could be uh, the removal of barakah, the removal of blessing. So they're keeping their money, they're not spending it for the sake of Allah, and so the barakah goes away, or it could be other forms of destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But we are, alhamdulillah, a generous community, a blessed community, ta'ala. Let's go ahead and continue by, by sharing those blessings, inshallah, throughout the month of Ramadan, and especially in these critical last 10 nights. These critical last 10 nights. And may Allah Azza accept from each and every one of you uh, for your generous support. So let's take a look. Alhamdulillah, we have, mashallah, a good amount of folks, 200 people in the Zoom, many more on YouTube, it looks like. So I am just overwhelmed by the energy and the amount of uh, dedication that our students have. May Allah continue to bless you. And I am so excited, uh, so honored to welcome our beloved sheikh and teacher who I benefited through uh, so many years of my life and many generations of Al-Maghrib students have as well. Sheikh Walid, welcome and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan assalam wa rahman. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Wonderful, Sheikh. I am so, so excited to be a part of the webinar earlier today, to be a part of this session. Ramadan 360 has just been a tremendous blessing for all of us. Alhamdulillah, everything's Alhamdulillah. wonderful. How are you? Excellent. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah ya barak fee. Looking forward for your visit to Houston. Yes, we're, it's in the works, inshallah. <laughs> we're coming soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. Please, please go ahead. We're okay. excited about the topic of the Sihah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alham
Um, today, I would like to speak to you about something that it is, it is one of the fundamental concepts in Islam. It is one of the most important uh, concepts in Islam. To the extent that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the whole deen, the whole religion is a nasiha, is advising. The whole entire religion is an advising. Advising is something so critical and so important, and, and it's such an important element in uh, our life, social life, and also one of the most important means for success. And it's such a big topic, and it can be addressed in many different ways. But if you look at the way al Quran, one of the most important to look at when you study the life of the prophets and the uh, messengers in the Quran is to see their qualities. And one of the standout qualities of those prophets and messengers that they give advice. That's their job is to advise their people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Nuh, for example, uh, I advise you. He said about Hud. I'm a sincere advisor. And Saleh. I have advised you, but you don't like those who advise. He told his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ One of the qualities of this Prophet, that حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ, he cares for you. And he shows his care for us by advising, by giving us. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not pass away. And he knows anything that it will benefit the Ummah unless he have Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam deliver it. And unless he have passed it on. To the extent that in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when people accept Islam, they used to give something called bay'ah, a legion, a commitment. And part of what they commit to as Jarir ibn Abdullah said, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I give my bay'ah to the, my commitment to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To do what? Ala salat To perform the salah. And to give the zakat. nush li kulli muslim. And to advise every muslim. In nasiha is something that it is, something was very common and practiced and, and, and welcome. And something that is very distinguished in the characteristic of the early generations. And uh, Ibn Mas'ud rahimahullah wa radiyallahu uh, said uh, when he commented in the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمُ When you say to someone اتَّقِ اللَّهَ became arrogant and he became like arrogant and, and say, who are you to advise me? Ibn Mas'ud said, it is when you advise your brother and he will tell you, oh, care for yourself. Someone like you should not, you should, uh, you will not teach me. Sometimes we do that even as parents. Are you going to teach me? Or are you young person going to teach me? That's أَخَذَتُ الْعِزَّ بِإِثْمِ يَقُولُ بِمْ It is the quality of the disbeliever and the hypocrite that they don't like to be advised. And if somebody advise you and you feel that you're not comfortable with and you feel like, you know, you, you hated it and, and you basically... I'm not talking here about someone who advised you in a wrong way. I'm talking about the advice as a concept. You, somebody doesn't like to be advised and doesn't like to be corrected. The best advice you want to hear, be yourself. That's the best advice you want to hear. That's, that's, that's a sign of hypocrisy. That's the way of the arrogant uh, disbeliever. And, you know, subhanAllah, it's interesting. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he is in the process of his death. 
and he dying. And a young man came and to give him salam to want to see him. When he was leaving, Umar called him. He said, come back, young man. I noticed your thob, your, your clothes dragging on the, on the ground. Make sure you make your, your, your lower garment short, shorter than your ankle. Raise it above your ankle. It is something that please your Lord and it will keep your clothes clean. He gave that advice even in the last minute of his life. I'm better than Umar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa While in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa trying to catch his last breath before he ran out of breath, he was saying to all of us, as salat as salat Make sure that you do a salah. Make sure that you take care of the salah. Make sure that you establish the salah. He gave advice in regard to women to treat them well. The, the servants, the slaves. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us it is one of the rights of your Muslim brother upon you. وَإِذَا اسْتَنْصَحَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَخَاهُ فَلْيَنْصَحُ حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمْ عَلْ الْمُسْلِمْ بِحَدِيدَ بِهُرَيْرَةً the right of a Muslim upon other Muslim that when you ask his advice, that he advise you sincerely or he advise you. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when someone asks you for advice, give the advice to them. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in Hadith Jubair ibn Mut'im, three things the Muslim's heart should be always filled with sincerity and regard these three things. One of them, الأمور, that you give advice to the leaders. SubhanAllah, this and the, the second one, to stick with the, un, to be you know, unified with the Muslim. You don't break the, the community. And the third one is sincerity. What that means, it means it purify your heart. And subhanAllah, those who have pure heart will always care for these things. I remember Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Jazairi, who's an older scholar in, uh, in Medina. Uh, very, uh, yeah, he visited the United States, I think, in, in 2000. And I was yeah, and he blessed, alhamdulillah, to be in the company of, of him and other scholars as well. But from all of them, he's maybe the oldest among all the group. And the most senior. And it's very, you know, subhanAllah, known of his sincerity. He's like, you know, rahimahullah uh, ta'ala. Anyway, Shaykh al he teach, he, he'd been teaching in the Masjid al-Haram, in Nabawi, Masjid al-Madinat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi more than 40 years. Okay? So anyway, um, uh, Shaykh al he was about to depart, to leave America after his visit. Then he, he asked me and other brothers, he said, I cannot leave before I write a letter to the president. At that time, the president was, if I'm not mistaken, was Bill Clinton. He wanted to write a letter to the president of the United States as an advice. He said, I am a, a Muslim scholar who visited your country, and I'm grateful and thankful for all the, you know, the the welcoming and the way we treat it in the airport. And I want to advise you. And he advised him about Islam and told him about Islam and how important Islam is for himself personally, salvations and for his people and for... And he wrote a beautiful letter to him. And he said, I want to send it to the, to the president. And he said, maybe some other yeah, any, uh, uh, young imams or will not, you know, feel, but for me as a senior scholar representing Islam and Muslims, I think it's an obligation of me to give an advice to him. And I, I, I felt how sincere this person, he didn't show this up, he didn't write it, he didn't like, you know, put it in social media, no. And nasiha is an art. Advising is an art. And I would like to break this topic to different, you know, uh, and approach it from multiple angles. Um, there are certain etiquettes when it comes to giving advice from the perspective of the one who is giving the advice. 
the advisor. Al Hassan al Hussein, it was reported that once they passed by an older man who make wudu, but he's not doing wudu properly. So they looked at each other and they said to this old man, Uncle, I want you to watch my wudu and to watch his wudu and to tell us which one is wudu is closer to the sunnah or better. Then they made wudu in front of him. He got it. Then he said, I, I understood your point. He said, you guys do it a little perfect. I'm the one who don't know how to make a little. I'm the one who's making a mistake. But this is, was their way to advise someone who's older than them. Exactly. It's wisdom. So let's explore some of these etiquettes. Number one, anytime you want to give advice to someone, make sure that you are sincere. Your point is not to show that you know. Your point is not to show that you have higher taqwa, higher knowledge, better, you know, uh, or to put somebody's down or to belittling the person. Okay, make sure it's not about riba or about to be famous. Like, unfortunately, today people give advice to, let's say, powerful people, speak truth to power. But they speak truth to power so they can put it online. So it became a trend. So it has way more likes and share. That's just not right. That destroy the nasiha. And nasiha is an act of worship. And in order for this act of worship to be accepted by Allah, it has to be done sincerely. Sometimes we advise our kids just to show them, to humiliate them, or to advise someone. You know, it just is it's not about the advice. It's about like it just showing up and 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 boosting and and or sometimes it is meant to humiliate the person, to make fun of people, to expose their mistakes. It was narrated in the in the hadith. That لا تضر الشماتة بأخيك فيعافيه الله ويبتليك ومن عير أخاه بدم لم يموت حتى يفعله. More likely, it is a statement from scholars, not as authentic as hadith. But anybody who make fun of somebody else's mistakes, who make fun of somebody else's sin, making fun of it, happy for it. Oh, I got you, kind of, you know, I did you will not die before he himself fall in the same mistake. He himself will do the same sin. I know someone who used to tell me, I used to make fun of all these people. He said, SubhanAllah Shahid, when I was young, I always, always make fun of those who married and they have like five, six kids. I said, six kids? This is too many. Too much. These guys don't know how to control themselves. This is blah, blah, blah. So they used to make fun of all this, especially certain people from certain, like Palestinians, Egyptians, whatever. You know, he said, oh, and he always make fun of them. I would never have that. I will only have, and I laugh because I know this brother. He has 10 kids. Since Allah, I, I used to make fun of it, but I, I basically, uh, uh, you know, and I realized that it was not right. Number two, always choose the best way of saying things. So many times it's not about what you're saying. It's about how you're saying it. What kind of words that you use. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in regard to the believers, وَهُدُوا إِلَى الطَّيِّبِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Allah guide them to say, the tayyib of al-qawl, the good uh, uh, things, uh, to say the good and the right words. You know, Allah says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Say to people what is nice. وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُوا الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Tell my servant to say the best 
of words. The ulama said, Allah said, follow that by saying, in the shaitan The shaitan will cause animosity. The scholar said, because if you say a statement, shaitan maybe make it misunderstood. If you say a statement which is vague, could mean good and bad, being sarcastic. The shaitan bring, you know, come to whisper to the person and he take it in the most wrong way and it became a problem. Allah did not say, say what is good. He said, say the best to close that door for the shaitan completely. And this is in Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always elevate Al-Kalim Al-Tayyib. Ilayhi yas'ad Al-Kalim Al-Tayyib. Elevate the good words. The Nabi sallallahu said, good words is sadaqa. Al-Kalim Al-Tayyib is sadaqa. The Nabi sallallahu said, ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا البديء المؤمن is not a one who الطعان the one who accuse اللعان the one who curse الفاحش the one who use indecent language البديء the one who use improper words and this hadith in al-Tirmidhi look يعني سبحان الله ابن عباس once was asked not ابن عباس sorry العباس his, his father Al-Abbas radiallahu Al-Abbas is the Prophet Sallallahu uncle. Qeel, anta akbar am in Nabi Sallallahu Akbar, it means older, but also it means uh, greater. So it's, it's a tricky word. In this context, it means older, but also it could, akbar, it means I'm bigger or greater. You or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam greater than me and I was born two years before him. He didn't say I'm Akbar min the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm bigger, better, or, or like older. He said around fire then he called them he said he want to know who they are he said oh people of the light over there so the narrator said Umar said oh the people of light he didn't see the people of fire see how how even this like he chooses his word very carefully When someone said uh, uh, to him, yani, um, Abu Bakr an, in the famous hadith, he said, when someone said, يعني, it says, no jazakallah khair. Why no jazakallah khair? You see, when you say, no jazakallah khair, no thank you. You know, it, it sounds like I'm saying no thank you to you in Arabic or even English. So it's no, full stop, then thank you, or comma, thank you. In Arabic, we add the letter wow to make that distinguish. La wa jazakallah khairan. La wa shukran la. Even to be very careful about the words that you, you do. You know, I, there is one of the judges, he used to have a, a blind man come to his gathering. Sit with him. And when this blind man wants to leave, he never tell people, hey, take his hand and uh, yani, uh, to wherever he wants. He said, go with him. As if you go, as if he is the one who leads. Even though he's a blind, he needs someone to lead him. He will not say, hey, take him and lead him. He said, go with him. Out of respect for him. You know, this is an art, how to choose the right word. There is one, uh, uh, um, this in the old days, they have somebody called Mu'addib, someone like, like he teach people proper manners. So he, was, he has one of the students of his. So the emir, the, the prince or the governor, want to test how 
good manners this, te this teacher teaches student. Then he said to the students, he's a young kid, young man. He said to him, he look at this and he show him the ring, the Khalifa's, the governor's ring, the prince ring. And he said, have you seen anything better than this ring? Then he said, yes, the finger that's in it. Your finger. And he was like shocked. Then uh, he was in, in this, uh, in the house of that uh, teacher. I think this was his son. Then he said, which house is better? The house of Amir al-Mu'mineen or your home? Then he said, yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen. When you are in our house, our house is better. When you are not in our house, your house is better. Then he said, I don't think there is anyone can teach people how to speak. You know, we might say like he's just, you know, uh, uh, just giving any cheap talks. But no, he chooses word carefully. And I'm saying this because sometimes uh, people who have multi languages can be caught in the middle. Make sure that you know how to answer, how to say things in the right way. And don't rush because sometimes it's hard. Like some culture, it might be different. When you say, no, thank you. No, I don't want this. Some culture, they're not used to say no, then follow that with thanks or please. It's a just different culture. But if you speak in English, make sure that you learn. So when you advise, when you talk, you sound correct. And I've seen people, especially sometimes when we come into the media, talk to officials, elected officials, give da'wah to non-Muslims, to indigenous, indigenous people. Make sure you know how to speak in the right way. We must know that some of us, uh, English is not their first language. You need to know how to say it in the nice way. You know, I had my own struggle with my uh, spouse. You know, and we need to have sabr with that. Uh, for example, one of the things that is uh, interesting is to know how to make... Sorry, just give me one second. Just don't want to go. the camera to turn off on me. Yeah. Uh, uh, for example, instead of making a direct question, you can make it an indirect question. Why don't you do some more exercise? Versus, how about doing some more exercise? Put yourself in the person's position. If I were you, I would do more exercise. Make suggestions. I would suggest doing more exercise. I would recommend doing more ex exercise. When you give advice, make sure that you give advice with lean, with gentleness, not with harshness. And before I move from the words, words one thing, but the tone, and that's where the harshness comes. The body language. So not only the word and the way you phrase your talk, also the way you say it. It's so important. Be gentle. You remember the story of the man who came and he urinated in the masjid of the Nabi Sallallahu and everybody came and started attacking him and Nabi Sallallahu said, just leave him. So gentle. Until he finished. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to him, this masjid, you cannot do this in the masjid. Then he said, I will lie. I never seen any teacher like him. It was so nice. And same thing, Mu'ayyib bin Hakam Sulami. He was praying behind the Prophet. So one Muslim sneezed and said, Alhamdulillah. So Mu'ayyib said, Ya Allah. In the Salah. So the people look at him. Yani. Then he said, why are you telling me to be quiet? He said, Alhamdulillah. And I said, Alhamdulillah. In the Salah. Can you imagine? So people get like upset. And after that, they came left and right. And the Nabi Sallallahu said, hold on. Bring him to me. He said, Wallahi ma naharani, wala dharabani, wala shatani. He didn't use any bad language. He didn't talk to me in a bad way. He didn't hit me or anything. He just told me that the salah, you cannot speak on it the way you talk outside the salah. And he was so happy. He said, oh Allah, have mercy on me and Muhammad and none of these guys. 
<laughs> yeah, he was so moved by how they were so nice to him and he was angry at them. Allah said, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became soft with them, gentle with them. Another etiquette of nasiha is private. I don't know where is private nasiha. People give you nasiha on Twitter. I have nasiha for your brothers. And I put it on Twitter or X or Facebook or Instagram. What kind of nasiha is that? And it's not nasiha. It's nasiha to an individual. If a nasiha about a concept, yes, but a, an individual. You don't do that. There's not a, a nasiha. Is. تعمدني بنصحك في انفرادي ولنبني النصيحة في الجماعة الشافعي said when you want to advise me advise me in private not in public private is something will make me accept your advice the private but in public it's a form of humiliation that I will not accept مسعر بن كدام one of the great scholars of hadith said may Allah have mercy to those who have gifted me my mistakes between me and them because giving me my, telling me my mistakes in public in front of people, it's a humiliation. And I'm not talking about a concept, and I'm not talking about someone who does something wrong and you correct them in public. Like somebody drinking with the left hand, and you said, hey, don't drink with your left hand. It isn't. But I'm talking about advice. It's a concept that you want to advise them about. You should do this, you should do that, you should not do that. You should be good to your parents, good to your children, you know, with your masjid, with the da'wah. By the way, this is not the right, and this is not understanding of Islam. You don't do that in public to humiliate the person. And imagine this is done also with elected officials and leaders. And There's a difference between me, for example, you know, talking to a governor or to, and I'm saying this because unfortunately we have the etiquettes that are taken from the left or the right. And we should take our etiquettes from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, openly you can object to the injustice that happened and done by your government or your, you know, your your governor or, or elected officials or whatever. Talk about the concept. But to talk to the person in a personal level and to give him an advice, that should be in a private manner. One of the etiquettes also for advice, when you give someone advice, make this a reason for you to stop be to practice what you preach. One of the things also and, 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 and important for you when you give an advice, don't be angry if somebody did not accept your advice. It's an advice. It doesn't have to be. It's not a, it doesn't have to be taken. And that shows a great deal of sincerity. I'm telling you about myself. I, sh I can share you with m you my experience. I'm the last sometimes. Sometimes I give good advice. But you know what I notice, my brothers and sisters? And Abdul Rahman, I can share this with you too. Some people like my advice so much that they frame it uh, uh, up on the wall instead of following it. So it became just a code, you know? You know, we might give advice, but we can't give conduct. As I think uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, if I'm not mistaken, uh, said once. So, one other thing also I want to say, when you give an advice, avoid arguing. We give advice, it's not about arguing and debate. A debate is not an advice. You know, don't try to embarrass, corner the person. How else do you make your point and you move on? Also, when you give advice, make sure that you are certain and, and have correct information. And you sometimes become accusation. I want to advise you about this and this and this and that. Yeah, but brother, I didn't do that. It didn't ever happen. So make sure you, you make sure it is correct information first before you give the advice. Allah says in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayuhalladheena amanu, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَمَأْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالًا فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Especially with all these doubts. Like sometimes, make sure you know. Like I give you an example. Recently, I have 
counter people talk to one of the uh, elected officials saying to you need to do this you need to do this you do you did this you did that and it, it was so embarrassing for us as a community when that election said but i didn't do that that's not true you might read that in facebook but that's not i never did that when i was elected or another person another incident he said guys you asking me to do something i don't have the power to do like it's not part of my juristics uh, 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 not part of my uh, any i don't have the tool i don't have the ability to do that jurisdiction yeah um uh, so you uh, make sure that you know what you're asking before you ask the advice to the person also like somebody said sheikh i have an advice for you you do this yeah habib but this person you talk about i is not my friend is not someone close to me is not my part of my community even so make sure you, you, you know what you talk about before you give the advice. Also, remember what Luqman said to his son. When you give an advice, expect retaliation. Expect that you might get attacked. Expect that you might be, even if it's not a personal advice. Be patient with the reaction of people. Be wise. Wisdom is the key point. Wisdom can be manifested in the following point. Right? Choose the right time. Your husband just come back from the, the work. Your wife just came back. She just wake up from sleep. Somebody's sick. It's not the right time to give advice. Yeah. Also, the right time, the right place. We're about to leave. We're about to go. We're about to eat. Is the right time, the right place. Also, make sure that you put your priorities. That's wisdom. I talk to this person about salah or I talk about like eating with the left hand. Sometimes left hand is, is take priority. Sometimes the salah take, it depends on the uh, priority of the time. But as a concept, somebody who doesn't follow the sunnah at all, somebody doesn't follow Islam, somebody who doesn't pray. These are more important. You know your priorities. Also, part of wisdom is to know the person that you are giving advice, their age, their status. You can't speak to someone, for example, who's uh, the chief police of the of the uh, of the city, who has, you know, certain type of attitude. Thousands of people under his command. You don't speak to him the same way you speak to your son or to your brother or someone who is like in your, in your peer. You know. Uh, uh, also, somebody in a time of calamity, you don't give an advice. Like I give you an example. You know, just. A disaster happened or a massacre happened. Then we start talking about advice about gun control or about, you know, your people doing all this aggression. That's why, you know, the foreign policy of the country, it's bad. That's that's not the time for giving this advice. It's like someone, her, her son died from drugs. Can you imagine? And I'm going to give my condolences to this mother. Her, her son just died from drugs. And I said to her, I told you, drugs are bad. You know, didn't tell you your son should not hang out of the room with the bad crowd. That's what happened. That's what drugs lead to. That's not the right time for it. It's like, for example, I'll give you another example. People, kids come for Halloween. Trick and treat, trick or treat. They come to your house for, for treat. And mashallah, you give them lecture about Islam. Habibi, these kids are coming for uh, candy, not coming for your lecture about Islam. That's just not the right time for it. Part of wisdom, also, look at that. Know what are the issues. Sometimes there is a deeper issue. Like, I was in a masjid once, and they asked me about um, doing Salat al janaza on the people who die in Palestine. And there is a big problem between the community and the imam. They want Salat janaza on them, blah, blah, blah. The Imam said, Khalas, there is, if there is somebody pray janazah on them, there is no need to pray janazah in here. But I realized that the problem is not the fiqh issue. The wisdom was to give an advice is, I think the community feel that the Imam is not emotionally invested in the crisis over there. So immediately what I did, I started making dua to the people of Palestine. And I made a long dua. Khalas, they don't care about Salat al-Jannah. As long as you make dua for them, that's all what we want. 
So sometimes you have to be wise, you know? Uh, 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 also, men different than women, young different than, also, which generation are you talking about? You know, I remember somebody was talking to a man, and he was telling him, he gave the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu when the man came to Rasulullah, give me permission to do zina. And he said, would you uh, uh, accept this for your mother, for your, he said, no. So he used this with someone who is non-Muslim or a convert. And he said, uh, would you be okay if your mom uh, uh, dates someone or uh, sleep with someone out of marriage? He said, yeah, that's up to her. <laughs> so the person was shocked by the answer. He thinks that it has to be the same answer of the Prophet ﷺ. No, people come from a different culture. Yeah, I mean, she, she wants to say whatever she wants. That's her girl. So you, you need to know, not because the Prophet ﷺ used that ma language or word, it, it will fit every culture. That's called wisdom. Make sure that your nasiha will not cause a greater harm. A greater harm. SubhanAllah. Ibn Abbas was asked once, should I advise everyone? He said, no. Allah said, وَذَكِّرْ إِن نَفَعَتِ الدِّكْرَى In, you give advice when you see the reminder will be beneficial. But if you know it's not going to be beneficial, it's not going to benefit someone, you don't give it. You don't give it. Sifat so Nabi Sallallahu said, sometimes some people do this. Some pe he, he didn't mention them by name. Sometimes you give someone a gift, a form of books, or maybe a, a, a website to check it out. And, and you make your point, you know. Uh, there are two things which is a man should, uh, yeah, and he 100% uh, avoid. Giving advice that he would not follow and asking advice when he's determined to pursue his own opinion. Also, be patient. When you give advice, don't expect instant. Ya Akhi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi took years to change people. Just be patient with them. When Safwan said, Ya Muhammad, give me a month to think about your religion. And Nabi Sallallahu said, four months. Talaka arba'at ashur. Before four months finished, he came and he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Also, when you give advice, don't make it too long. Short advice, like Ibn Mas'ud used to give advice, not every day, every Thursday. Some people, mashallah, every day advice, every time he sees kids advice. Also, be honest. When you give advice, you know, in giving advice, in giving advice, seek to help, not to please. Yani when you give advice, seek to help the person, not to please the person. Your true friend is the one who is honest with you, not the one who just say, oh, this is right, everything is right. So it is important to be honest when you give the advice. And Allah will ask you because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a man, it's a trust. Finally, yani, just very quickly, for the other one, and the other end, the one who receiving the advice. You know, it takes a great man to give sound advice, tactfully. But you know what? A greater man is the one who accepted graciously. For no, for no doubt. That's why you have to learn how to accept it with graciousness, with, with being, you know, with open heart, with open mind. So for Musa alayhi salam, a man came to him and he said, Inna al bik, they are plotting against you to kill you. I'm advising you, leave the town. What Musa said, no, I have the palace, I have this, I have power, I'm a, you know, no. Minha, immediately he left. You know, uh, there is a, a man, a Jewish person, his name Ibn Sa'na, uh, he read the Torah and he saw in the Torah all the descriptions of the upcoming prophet and every description fit the prophet he, he witnessed that except one description he didn't see it yet which is every time you make him more you're supposed to make him more angry he became more patient and forbearing 
then he said, I want to test that. If this is in him, that means he is the prophet and the messenger. So he came to the prophet وسلم, and said, Ya Muhammad, you have taken loan. Give me back my money or give me back what you have taken from me. Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib, you are guys known for never pay, back, pay people back on time. And was angry and raising his voice. Umar radiallahu an, he became so angry that you can tell in his eyes that there is fire in his eyes. Yeah, and he almost want to go and strike this man. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, let me, you know, teach this man. Umar, Ya Umar, come down. And Nabi Sallallahu said, come down. And the man kept saying insulting things to the Prophet. Well, Umar, get angry on us. And Nabi Sallallahu said, get down. Ya Umar, this is not how you should act. And Nabi Sallallahu smiled and he said, please give him his money back and give him more. Then the man said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah. Why? Because he found that every time he tried to make him more angry, and Nabi Sallam became more calm. And he said to Umar, Ya Umar, you should ask me to pay my debt. And you should ask him to ask nicely. But don't be angry at him. When somebody advise you, don't try to justify. Don't be arrogant. Don't, don't insist on the wrong. When somebody advise you, you know, be happy. Be grateful that Allah sent someone to advise you. You should, you yourself, go and ask for advice. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you go to ask nasiha. That's why Umar radiallahu anhu arda said, there is no good in us if we don't accept your advice and no good in us if we don't ask for your advice. So Umar said both. Shafi'i said, I never advised someone and he accepted from me unless I respected him so much and he became a close friend of mine. And no one ever rejected my advice unless this person fall from my eyes. Thank him or her when she advised you. Even for your own kids. Wallahi, many times my kids correct me. And I say sorry, and I said thank you. Is the reward of good anything but good? Hal jazal ihsan illa ihsan? Also, Ibn Hazm mentioned this, and it's a very beautiful thing. Don't ever advise someone who is advising you. Ibn Hazm said that's a revenge. That's not advice. That's bad intention. Yani somebody giving you advice, and after revenge. Okay, and I have one for you too. You know, I want to also tell you something. Ah, no. I remember I called somebody and I gave him advice about something. And he said, and I have an advice for you. I said, no, I'm not going to listen. He said, how come you ask me to listen to me, your advice, but not now you don't want to listen to my advice? Because it's not advice. It's a reaction. You can call me after this and say, Walid, I have an advice for you. you will, I will hear you out. But I'm giving you advice, and you reply by giving me advice back. That's a bad manner. Also, listen. Don't just hear the advice. Listen to the advice. Have a good intention. Maybe you, if it's not something in you, consider it a reminder. Something in you, it's a correction. Please, there is a difference between making fun of people and advising people. Please, there is difference between advising people and being nosy. You don't know how many times I have to give people their nose back because I found it in my own business. You know, there is a difference between the two. And it, intention play a great role in this area. And the shaitan sometimes make us extreme in one of the two areas. Either we don't advise because it's personal or we become too much involved in people's private life. Also, there is a difference between giving advice and judging people. I advise you, but it, I'm not being judge, judging you. There is a difference between these two.
the most effective nasiha, the most effective way, the one that comes from a sincere heart, with a nice, gentle way. Advice will be much, have more effect when it comes from someone that is trusted. Before you start advising people, earn their trust, earn their love. You know, people will not care about what you're telling them until they know that you care about them. People will not care about what you're telling them and advising them about until they know that you care about them. Advice is such a beautiful thing because it gives you a fresh perspective, different perspective. It adds value to you. We should seek advice. Advice should be given to individuals, to organizations, to institutes, to government, to elected officials. We should be in the concept of advising. Sometimes we just, it became, we became so polarized politically that it's about, hey, I got you, I this. No, you, you, don't, you don't feel sincere. I think Muslim can play that role of being sincere advisor. Giving a, advice based on ilm and knowledge and, and with sincerity. And, and I can share a lot of success stories in regard to this. When we give an advice to certain things that we found a problem. And I will end with this. In Texas, we found, for example, that we have a law. You know, the law in Texas and many other states, many other places, uh, do not differentiate between age group when it comes to somebody get arrested or put in handcuffs. Do you know more than 18,000 kids were put in handcuffs? 18 or 14,000 kids in, in a matter of a year or two years, something like that. You know how they handcuff kids from their elbows? 80% of them are mental health issues. The officers do that because that's the law. So a group of people came and talked to me, talked to other leaders in our community and said, you know what, why don't we advise the government about this? And we brought, you know, studies and, and we met with the police department, head of the police, and they said, we would love this law to change. We don't want to handcuff kids. We go to teachers, we go to parents, we go to many educators, psychologists, and we build a coalition led by Muslims. And we give an advice to the elected official. And you know what? It became the state of Texas law now that anyone who's under the age of 10 years old will not be put in handcuffs, unless in a very extreme circumstance. In a bipartisan fashion. And it was said in that time, this is the first time we see these people from across the aisle coming together. It was initiated as a nasih, as an advice, and it took, you know, its, its process. And I know so many stories like this. I'm just giving you in a, in a level of, of, of uh, government and also on a level of personal. Sometimes we forget that we need to give advice, even to the people who are bad. Allah said, give advice to Fir'aun. Speak to them in a nice way. You know, unfortunately, today with social media, we became so aggressive. I used to say when before it, the name was changed, I used to say, tweet people the way you like to be tweeted. You know, uh, I guess X people don't like to be X today. I don't know how to say that today. But, you know, I, you know the, the cancel culture, yes, the, 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 the aggressiveness, the accusation. You know, Dawood al Bahiri was debating someone once, and this man said to Dawood al-Dahiri, Kafart, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I became kafir. Dawood al-Dahiri said, are you saying alhamdulillah that I became kafir? You're happy that I became kafir? What is this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, uh, make us all sincere and uh, uh, know how to give advice. One of the best ways to do that, to read in the seerah of the Prophet, these scholars, 
be around Ahlul Ilm, people of experience, and hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, uh, يعني, we can grow. But advise, advise, it is an essential thing, and it has to be revival between us that we advise one another. We write letters to another, private message to each other. When you hear something wrong, you correct me, you tell me. You know, just let's make sure that we care about each other's success and growth. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tweet people the way you want to be tweeted. X people the way you want to be X. I love it. I love it. I love it. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh Walid. Really appreciate your time today and your your, your advice about advice uh, was so meaningful and we saw a lot of great notes and gems were being captured uh, due to the time folks if you have questions what i'm going to ask you to do we're not going to do questions now but we do have uh, sheikh walid with us tomorrow for fatwa night right so the, if you what, what you can do is go into the portal click on the hand and we have alhamdulillah some room for additional questions there so you, i i did notice a lot of the questions you all asked the Sheikh answered in his subsequent statement. So if you were paying attention, inshallah, you got a lot of your answers already. But if you have more pressing questions about Nasiha or any other uh, fatawa around Ramadan or any of the other topics covered within uh, Ramadan 360, just go to the form, inshallah ta'ala, and would it be, be with us. Would it be okay if I give a small Nasiha? Of course, of course. For everybody in this call, maybe somebody hear me. My advice to you, before I go, make sure you donate to Al-Maghrib. Allah. Wallahi, it is from a sincere heart to you because it is one of the sadaqah jariya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah for you. I, I advise for you and I advise for myself and my family. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you so much, Sheikh Walid, uh, once again. And for everyone, yes, you can donate at uh, almaghrib.org forward slash donate. The campaign is still live. You can automate your donations for the last 10 nights. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our sadaqah and to accept the time that we spend learning his deen. Allahumma ameen. Uh, brothers and sisters, time is super precious today. We have about 15 and a half minutes for some reflections with our Ustada Taymiya Zubair. So I'll go ahead and add the spotlight here. Bismillah. Ustada Taymiya, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, subhanAllah, I was so tired and... Just listening to Sheikh Walid, I don't know where that hour flew by, subhanAllah. Same here. Same here. I, I enjoyed every minute of it, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Same, Alhamdulillah. same here, absolutely. Although we would we, we love to benefit from your reflections. Bismillah. All right, inshallah, let's begin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. So just very quickly, I want to go over uh, the meaning of nasiha, um, just a few things, and then inshallah we'll uh, take reflections. So the word nasiha is from the word nasaha, uh, which is uh, used to describe the act of of, clar of clarifying or purifying honey. Okay, um, so nas is clarified honey. Because when you first extract honey, uh, you know, there's bits and pieces of like all sorts of things. So uh, to clarify honey is nasr. So nasr is when something is pure. And this is why the word nasliha is to give, it means to give sincere advice, meaning you have no ulterior motives. You have no other uh, you know, uh, intentions, your, your, your pure intention over here is to wish the best for the other person. You want to direct them to what is best for them. Okay. So we see, for example, in the Quran, Nuh alayhi salam said, Ubaliru risalati rabbi wa ansahu lakum. This is Surah Al-Araf, verse number 62 that I convey the messages of my Lord to you, and I give you sincere advice, meaning I'm telling you to do what is best for you. Uh, then the word nasiha also means to be sincere and faithful in one's conduct with someone. So it's not just to give sincere advice, but it is also to, to act faithfully with someone meaning you are sincere with them. 
Uh, and this is why we have in the hadith, uh, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that ad-dinu an-nasiha, the religion is uh, sincerity, it is nasiha. So the people asked to who, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Allah. Now, do you, you don't give sincere advice to Allah. No, what what it means is that you are uh, faithful and honest and sincere in your conduct with Allah that you worship only him and that you are not hypocritical, right? That you are truthful to Allah, uh, also to his book, to the Quran, and also to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, the, and that you are sincere to all, all the Muslims and also, also the leaders, right? So uh, we have this uh, meaning in the Quran also, in Surah Al-Qasas, where when Musa alayhi salam, as a baby, when he ended up in the house of Fir'aun, and uh, you know they were struggling to find someone to nurse baby uh, to, to nurse baby Musa, uh, you know the, his sister was there, and she came to their rescue, and she said that هل أدلكم على أهل بيت يكفلونه لكم وهم له ناصحون. I'll tell you about a family who will take care of him and they will be very sincere to him, meaning in their conduct, they will be very honest and faithful to him. They will take care of him, it, it, you know, the way that they take care of their own children. So uh, so this is basically what nasiha is, to give sincere advice and also to be faithful and sincere in one's conduct with someone, to not act, behave hypocritically with them. And the two are linked together because when you're giving advice to someone, right, your focus over there is not to, and as, as we learned from the excellent, uh, you know, uh, uh, instructions that Sheikh Walid shared with us or the etiquette of uh, nasiha, your goal over there is not to glorify yourself, right? It is that you want the best for the other person, right? And when your focus is the other person's welfare, right? then you don't, your focus is not about how you feel. It's it's them, right? So for example, when when there's a child who's throwing a tantrum, uh, who, who, who's throwing a, a, a temperate tantrum, right? Uh, if you focus on yourself about how you feel, then you're going to think like, this is so offensive. I'm losing my mind over here. This is, you know, impossible to, to manage. But when your focus is, is on the child, right? Then you focus on what they need to hear from you. They need you to be calm, not to blow up, right? They they need you to have composure, to, to protect them, not that you start yelling at them, right? So the word nasiha occurs uh, about 13 times in the Quran in different forms. And we see basically that in the Quran, the word nasiha is mentioned Within, uh, within the context of uh, the stories of the prophets. And the prophets of Allah were all sincere to their people. If you look at Surah Al-A'raf, uh, the stories of many prophets are mentioned. And they they said to their people that, وَنَصَحْتُ لَكُمْ That I give you sincere advice. وَأَنَا لَكُمْ نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ I am sincere to you. Uh, so uh, all of the prophets of Allah, they were sincere to their people. They gave sincere advice, and we see this not just in the prophets of Allah, but also in in the stories of other people who invited people to the worship of Allah alone. Like, for example, in Surah Yasin, the man who came and uh, you know defended the prophets and called people to the worship of Allah. He was he was very sincere to his people. I wanted to reflect over the verses, but inshallah, uh, another time. Uh, just three three more things. When, when we are uh, giving advice to people uh, or, or, or to have sincerity for people, right, means that you direct them to that which is best for them. We, you know, if you, if you were asked, do you care about people? You would say, yes, I do, right? You have empathy. You want the best for other people. And that's great. But what does that mean? Does that mean that you want them just to be happy? You want them to feel safe? You want them to have access to clean water? 
what is it that you want for people? We see that the prophets of Allah, they cared about people and you know what they wanted for them? They wanted to save them from the punishment of Allah in the hereafter. And this is why they guided people to that which is best for people. And that is Tawheed. That is the oneness of Allah. And for that, uh, and, and in order to guide people to the truth, they did not water down the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that, Ya ayyuhar rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O messenger of Allah, convey whatever has been sent down to you from your Lord. Meaning, don't conceal the truth, don't water it down. You, you have to tell the truth to people if you really care about them, right? And the, the second thing is that the prophets of Allah did not set their gaze on what people could give them. No, they all said, وَيَا قَوْمِ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مَا لَا I do not ask you for any reward. I do not ask you for any money. In أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ My reward is only from Allah. So when you want the best for people, that means you guide them to that which is best for them and that you don't expect anything from them. And then the third thing I wanted to mention is that not all people like sincere advisors, right? So you could come to people with a lot of sincerity, you're very faithful and honest, but they don't like it. In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 79, we learn that, وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاصِحِينَ You do not like those who give sincere advice. And one more thing, not all people who claim to be sincere are actually sincere. Be careful. Because in the Quran we see in Surah Al-A'raf that shaitan said to Adam alayhi salam, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ That I am very sincere to you, take my advice. So when somebody is giving you advice, don't just accept it, right? You have to see what, what is it that you are being advised about, right? Like, for example, if someone, you as, as, a, as a Muslim hijab-wearing woman, you go for your haircut and they say, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, you your, your hair needs some sunlight. And all, you know, when you wear hijab all the time, it's really damaging your hair, Right. And I have all this experience and I'm telling you, uh, I want the best for you. It's up to you. No, just because someone is saying that they want the best for you doesn't mean that they're giving you the best advice. All right. So be careful. Shaitan also said that I am very sincere to you. And the brothers of Yusuf السلام, also said to their father, Wa inna lahu We are very sincere to him. Please send him with us. Were they actually sincere to him? No, they weren't. So be careful. Inshallah. All right, let's uh, hear from you. We have about five minutes. So, okay, Bismillah. S, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, I have a close family member who moved to the area that I live in and she's completely new to the environment. And I've been giving her advice since she came about like the people, the norms and the culture. And I realized like she didn't take a lot of my advice. So in the beginning, I was like very hurt and because I was just looking out for her and her safety. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, I realized that she she's not required to take my advice and she's not like I can't push my advice onto her I can do the best to advise her and the best to help her out and help her adapt and navigate the situation she's in but she doesn't owe anything to me and the thing you said about like some people don't like some fear sincere advice or sometimes you just have to be patient for them because it's not the right time to give them that advice because I realize she's learning on her own bit by bit so mm -hmm. I still give her sincere your advice to help her but I don't have that intention of like oh, oh I hope she takes it right away because I realize that she is learning on her own and I can still help her but I shouldn't expect anything out of her mm -hmm. good all right sister Bukis go ahead when I reflect on the prize advice uh the intention should be there, it is to help, and it has to be sincere coming from the heart. We have to check ourselves that uh, why are we why are we advising that person? 
for what reason? Is it to show that I have the knowledge or or, or what, really to help the person? And as well, where, not in front of everybody, and uh, when, to, when to say it and what, how to say it as well. And, and I think advice doesn't have to be by words. It can be by actions as well, mm -hmm. by our own action. Yeah. And that's it. I think one thing that I took from uh, Sheikh Walid's session is that you cannot be impulsive when you're giving advice. You have to think through. And it's okay to take your time. It's okay to let your uh, you know, mind gain some clarity. And then you think through and then you give sincere advice. Uh, next person. Go ahead. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa Am, am I am I audible? So uh, a quick reflections, you know. So I believe sometimes we kind of tend to overlook ourselves when giving advice. It is like we kind of get to learn something and we are quickly reminded of somebody in our family members. It is like, oh my God, I know this is for my brothers or my sisters or my mom or in laws and so on. So I think it's important to remember that the first audience for our advice should be ourselves. It is like speaking in front of the mirror with our fellow, you know, Muslims and believers. It is like they are the reflection. And I'm talking to first and foremost, you know, to myself, like as a reminder. So when I say, you know, pray five times a day, I'm actually speaking to first and foremost to myself, right? And and just like, in, you know, uh, it's mentioned in the Hadith, Prophet Sallallahu the believer is a mirror to his fellow believer. So I think we can find that connection here. Jazakallah. Um, this is very important that sometimes we're just focused on advising other people and we don't worry, you know, we, we don't think about ourselves. Uh, sometimes when we're learning something as well, the, the only intention or goal over there is, oh, I'm going to pass this on. I'm going to teach someone this. No, this is for me. So don't forget about yourself in caring about others. You know, when you're on the plane, they say, first, put the mask on yourself and then help the child next to you. Um, all right, I think that's it. I think that's it. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Uh, how quickly the time goes when uh, we're in the midst of some some very wonderful reflections. Uh, Ustada Tamiya, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us and uh, for helping us to better understand this uh, a beautiful, amazing concept of Nasiha. May Allah bless you and bless your family. Wa iyaakum. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And everyone, that brings us to the end. Some of you have been on the marathon session with us, mashallah, since 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's now 6.15 p.m. Eastern time. So just a few uh, a few thank yous. Once again, thank you to our charity partners, HHRD. Here in the U.S., we have Islamic Relief in Canada, and we have Forgotten Women in the U.K. Uh, thank you for those partners who allow us to continue to present uh, Ramadan 360 to the world. Please support them at the links that we drop in the chat. Also, don't forget Al Maghrib's giving campaign for the uh, Al Maghrib uh, classes and webinars and sessions and everything that comes along with that is still ongoing. Al Maghrib.org forward slash donate. We do have tomorrow a, a bit of an early start if you want to join us for Fatwa Night, is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time with Sheikh Walid Basuni. Go ahead and ask your questions in the portal. If you haven't already, we'll try to get those covered for you tomorrow. And then we'll have our 5 p.m. session, inshallah, regularly scheduled programming for Ramadan 360. Uh, that will be with Sheikh Ahmed Salim talking about khushu'a, submissive humility. So that should be a really special session as well. The Kahoot is also tomorrow, guys. Kahoot is also tomorrow. So bring your game faces. I know it gets competitive. I know it's really fun. Uh, be invested, review your notes, review the Padlet, all that information that you've been sharing and documenting the past week's information. Be ready to, to participate in that as well. And finally, for our UK folks, I know there are a few of you here. Uh, I saw um, Sister Ghazala, uh, 
other other folks from the UK. Remember your time change, right? So tonight there's a time change. You're going to the British summertime, which means that the session will be one hour later for those of us who are based in the UK. But please don't let that be a barrier to joining us, inshallah ta'ala. With that, I'm your brother and your host, Abdurrahman Wood. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with us today. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless your families and bless what's remaining in the month of Ramadan. We'll see you soon, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa